Of course, the Metro isn't going to ignore the story of the death of the Iranian president, but the Metro deserves an accolade for just one word that they put into this article that I thought I would never see in British reporting. And I'm going to tell you all about it after I've told you that I am Granny Opteryx. So where Metro deserves the accolade is in just one word right at the end of their article. They're talking about the life of Mr. Raisi, who I have to remind you was referred to in the headline as the Butcher of Tehran. I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but I can hardly wait to tell you about what else they say. Born in Mashhad on December the 14th, uh, 1960, he was born into a family that traces its lineage to Islam's prophet Muhammad. Now, how many times have you heard that? Islam's prophet Muhammad. And how many times have you heard people like the BBC referring simply to the prophet Muhammad, as if he was our prophet, as well as a prophet of a religion called Islam? Not many. They're always talking about the Prophet Muhammad. Now, I know they feel they have to talk about the Prophet because there are so many Muslims, so many Muslim men called Muhammad, that it's sometimes difficult to differentiate. However, he is not the Prophet Muhammad. He is Islam's Prophet Muhammad. And I am so pleased that the Metro got it right. It's a good sign and I hope they stick with it and I hope other news outlets use the same form of reference. Uh, just to go over the actual the, the story, though, the way I understand it is there were three hel helicopters. The president's was in the middle one and suddenly the other two lost contact with the, the, the middle one, the third and it just fell out the sky. Now, there are various ways we can, um, we can interpret this. But I want to tell you, whatever we think, we will never know the truth because the investigators who will go there to find out what happened will say what the Iranian government tells them to say. Isn't that so? So what's going to happen is this. They're going to say one thing. They can say the Israelis did it. That's a good one. Or they can say it's a technical fault, which is a high possibility. It could have been that the pilot decided that he was going to end it all. And that's a possibility. It could be that, that it was sabotaged by people within Iran who don't like the present Muslim stranglehold on the Iranian people. So it, it could be a whole lot of things. And, and whatever they find, it will be because the Iranian government will tell them to find it. They'll either wish to blame Israel or they'll just say it's a technical fault. And it's a high possibility of it being a technical fault because everywhere else in Iran is experienced technical faults of various sorts. That's because in Iran, you get a job, well, because of family connections or religious orthodoxy, which is what happened in the Soviet Union. Uh, they had the religion of what they called Marxism, and you got your job because you were uh, a provably strong Marxist or because you came from a Marxist family. And that's why the Soviet Union went down the tubes. And that's what's going to happen in China because the same thing's happening there. Religious orthodoxy, uh, you get your jobs because of religious orthodoxy rather than because you, you're good at your job. And in Iran, you, there are plenty, you, you can find them on the internet. There are plenty of uh, videos of uh, crumbling dams and, of course, flooded cities because the flood defences haven't been maintained properly and uh, all that sort of thing. And uh, the Iranian people deserve better 
than this. What's next here? Uh, this is the, uh, the, the crash site. And uh, this is the he helicopter. It's a Bell 212, which it must have, it must be quite an old helicopter. They were originally, I think they were used during the Vietnam War. Now they upgraded them since then, obviously. But it is an American helicopter. Uh, I believe that they're manufactured in Canada now, but yeah, I'm not too sure about that. But it's an American helicopter, which is ironic. And uh, they, it must be fairly old. And when something like that gets fairly old, you, you need to maintain it properly. And if the people who are maintaining it aren't that well qualified or don't really care too much, then you're going to get accidents. Of course, this is a mountainous area and conditions were pretty bad. You see the rescuers going up there. You can see the weather was awful. So the weather might have had something to do with it. But of course, a helicopter doesn't go down in bad weather unless it's struck by lightning, which I don't think was going on there. A helicopter doesn't go down just like that because of bad weather. It goes down because it can't cope with bad weather and it can't cope with bad weather because it's not being properly maintained. Uh, so I saw a video released by two, I, I presume they're Iranian women in Iran, and they were there not wearing hijabs and uh, drinking what appears to be a glass of beer each. So they were toasting the, at the time, the accident. Um, they were sort of celebrating it. And I, I'm not going to try and find it again. I don't think that video should be circulating too much. It probably won't do the, the young women any good. It's terrible to celebrate the death of a human being. Uh, but we have to remember this guy was called the Butcher of Tehran. And th that's for a reason. He was nicknamed the Butcher of Tehran uh, because he helped oversee the mass executions of thousands in 1988. Thousands. He's responsible for the death of thousands of people in executions, you know, hanging from, uh, well, yeah, I've got to be careful what I say. Building equipment, yeah. And later led the country as it enriched uranium, I have to say, with the cooperation of Barack Obama. Let's not forget that. Uh, it reached uranium near weapons grade levels and launched a major drone and missile attack on Israel. And he was tipped to the, as the most likely person to succeed, Supreme Leader, Leader Ali Khamenei, who I think must be in his 80s now. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, Raisi's presidency was plagued with protests against deteriorating economic conditions and the oppression of women, often resulting in violent crackdowns. Yeah, now let's get back to this here. Before they found the wreckage, there was an announcement. Uh, Everyone must pray for the health of these public servants. The people of Iran must not be anxious or worried. And here is a picture. Now, I'll try and enlarge it for you. But it says here, uh, this is a bit of... Yeah, w w when the caption says one thing and you see something else. that Supporters flock to shrines for group prayer. And here you see three brainwashed women uh, on their knees praying. And there's a lot of men standing around just looking at their mobile phones. I don't see that as supporters flocking to shrines. But I do have to point something out. Now, this is entirely nothing to do with Israel per se. But there are so many Iranians who support Israel, which really did surprise me when I learned about it, because they've had since 1979 a complete tsunami of anti-Israel propaganda. And yet there are many Iranians who've been brought up from kindergarten through university with all this propaganda and they're still not buying it. They're still not allowing themselves to be brainwashed in the way, for instance, that the people in Gaza ha allowed themselves to be brainwashed. And that says something about the people of Iran.
Now you get some brainwashed people here. There are going to be some, but there are more by the looks of things who aren't that impressed. And that in itself is a marvelous thing. I'm not celebrating the death of Raisi. I wish he was still alive and a better person. However, there are many Iranians who will be celebrating today uh, and I can't blame them considering the fix they're in now because of the sort of political system that he helped perpetuate. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.